wizard, sorcerer, conjurer, wonder maker, miracle maker. The very names invoke images of gods and demigods from times gone by and afar. Masters of the mystic arts, seekers of immortality. But what distinguishes the miracle maker from the run-of-the-mill vaudeville magician? What makes a wizard a wizard and not a birthday party magician who pulls rabbits from hats, silk scarves and streamers from colorful cylinders, and cuts his assistants in half? The answers lay within the secret and arcane disciplines and practices of what today we call holistic arts practitioners of the far eastern healing art of yoga, of tai chi, qigong, kung fu, meditation, divination, remote viewing, reiki or ling chi, the divine practices and disciplines of the metaphysical and the mystical. Those who seek out mastery over the outer through mastery of the inner. This is the true secret of metaphysics, mysticism, and performance magic. This is the difference between a conjurer, a wizard, a sorcerer, and a magician. This is what makes the difference between a magician simply doing tricks and a conjurer performing miracles. What is the difference? What goes on in a play? on stage or in art and music? What distinguishes between the ordinary, between earthly existence and the divine? And is there an overlap? Can one experience the divine within the ordinary? Sure, it's easy to experience euphoria, bliss, pleasure, rapture, or even the divine within the pages of a well-written novel or prose or even poetry, music and painting, even animation and comics. They bring a tear of joy or sorrow to one's eyes. This is the key to it all. Emotions. The ability to feel the divine through peace, joy, sorrow. The feeling of being home and safe. A feeling of familiarity. Is this the divine and can one access it at will? Better still, can one share divinity? Can one invoke within others extreme bliss, joy, peace or sorrow? The answers lay in the works of the ancient mystics, metaphysicians and ancient philosophers such as the Buddha and Lao Tzu. The writings and ancient knowledge within the Sanskrit language and the Bhagavad Gita, the Hindu Bible. Those philosophers who called themselves the immortals and whose wisdom may be uncovered within the pages of Taoism, the yin and yang of life through which was birthed Kung Fu, Tai Chi, and the healing powers of Qigong, Reiki, or Ling Chi, Yoga and the complete health system, having been birthed through the sacred songs of Sanskrit wisdom, healing philosophers and sounds that manifested through the Buddhas, giving us Tibetan healing, Zen meditation, and mind puzzles such as koans which supposedly unlock the higher secrets of our unconscious minds. Even contemporary techniques such as self-hypnosis and mystical meditation promise us the divine gifts and knowledge of the ancients. These are all the supposed keys to healing and higher wisdom. Can a thorough, regular and devoted practice of meditation, tai chi or even yoga bring us to utter bliss, eventually improving our acting? musical and on-stage performances? The answer lies within. Science and clinical studies have already proven a correlation between relaxation, lowered blood pressure and increased creativity through self-hypnosis and meditation. There is little doubt today that taking the time to relax and pace yourself 
along with healthy diet and exercise will certainly increase your longevity. But will the spiritual practices, those that nurture your soul, such as yoga, meditation, and Tai Chi, provide additional benefits, increase stamina, creativity balance, and a quality of life leading to longevity? The answer to this is also a resounding yes. Since practices that supposedly nurture the soul all involve self-hypnosis or altered states, such as are found in meditation, relax the mind and body as well, there is little doubt that this increased relaxation on all levels results in a sort of allowing an opening up of or access to the divine and therefore to creativity. In layman's terms, you relax enough to open your unconscious mind to the wisdom and creativity that lays within it, which then seeps to the surface as ideas and inspiration. Some call this intuition or God guidance, and this wisdom may be used to solve many of life's problems. At the very least, regular and ongoing meditation will allow for an increased personal holistic evolution that is to say mind, body, and soul over time. Regular and ongoing meditative practices such as Tai Chi, Qigong, Kung Fu, and Yoga will result in a better you, so to speak, as well as a better performer, artist, writer, or musician. More of the real or inner you will come out, providing more of a better quality of life for yourself and for others. But that's only the beginning. In part one, we learned that mysticism or reaching for a higher or divine experience and purpose will result in a better you. These metaphysical or holistic practices such as meditation, yoga and tai chi will eventually improve not only your inner and outer well-being but also result in you giving better on-stage performances as well as help to increase your musical and artistic creativity and abilities as long as you've already discovered interests and abilities in these areas maybe even showing a modicum of talent in these areas science and clinical research has already proven this we will now delve deeper into some of the mystic arts spoken of by the ancient philosophers.